6, there have been a lot of questions from you, our viewers, about whether that tactical gear worn in the line of duty is enough protection for law enforcement officers. Yeah, News 5's Laura Wilson spoke with Pueblo Police today about the different kinds of equipment they're using, and they're saying, what, some of these uh, more heavy-duty vests, Laura, aren't always the best option? Right, and not all state agencies have this gear, but in Pueblo, they do have active shooter gear. Now, it's more effective than the standard vest as far as being bullet resistant, but what I'm being told is it's just not practical to wear every day. The closer it is to home, the more uneasy it makes you. On the eve of his two-year anniversary with the Pueblo Police Department, <laughs> It's hard for Philip V. Hill to not think about fallen deputy Micah Flick. Traffic stops are probably one of the most dangerous to uh, do, but it's part of our job. V. Hill says he feels well equipped during traffic stops. Two, three, four, traffic. Though concerned citizens have started questioning whether tactical gear worn across the state offers enough protection. It does not protect you from every threat. And, and Certainly looking forward, we would hope that some technology develops that, that will give us that opportunity. And this is what's called soft body armor. All officers are required to put these on during each shift before even getting in their car. We are providing the best level of protection that we can right now. The other type of vest is about 10 to 15 pounds heavier and is designated for more dangerous incidents like a standoff. It will stop a higher caliber bullet. But as we learned this week, you can't always predict which calls are routine and which ones will turn deadly. We wanted to know why not wear these vests all the time. It's simply impractical to wear. Uh, because it's so bulky and it's so heavy. And he says for someone with a stature like mine, the extra weight after an extended period of time can affect how you hold or even aim your gun. Training in my mind is, is probably the bigger component as opposed to the body armor. Taylor says these recent tragedies may be incorporated into future training sessions. I'm sure there will be opportunities for us to look at that and, and, and find ways to learn from uh, those scenarios so that we can train our officers. Now, there are about 10 people in the police academy down here in Pueblo right now, and Captain Taylor told me he did plan at some point this week to go in and speak with those recruits and specifically address these three recent tragedies and make sure he answers any questions or concerns they may have. Watching out for you in Pueblo, Laura Wilson, News 5. Laura.